Cleaning up distracting pixels on a frozen still frame is easy. I mean, even Apple Intelligence can do that on your phone. But with video, we have lighting changes to deal with on every new frame. It sticks there really nicely, but the problem is the color, right? So today, I'd like to teach you how to use two of my new favorite Fusion Reactor macros to clean up a shot in DaVinci Resolve Studio. So the task today is to remove a sticker off the back of the travel trailer even as lighting changes using two new tools from Fusion Reactor. Now before I even open up Fusion, I want to point out if I hit Shift 9 to our project settings, I have color management, DaVinci YRGB color managed turned on, just the HDR mode. This is going to be an automatic way for us to work in linear light space, which is the right way to work in Fusion for compositing. You got to work in linear. All right, I'm opening up Fusion. I've got my Layout here is set to mid-flow vertical. I like to work this way. If you've never done it, you might give it a try. Workspace menu, layout presets, fusion presets, mid-flow vertical. And I'm just dealing with the one viewer right now. Now the advantage also to working with color management, the DaVinci YRGB color managed, is it's automatically applying a fusion view LUT up here so that we don't have to look at the linear image, which is super dark and hard to see. Now, the tools I want to bring up today are from Milo Labs Toots. He has a tutorial on this. I just wanted to bring it up because I showed a long version of this uh, last year, and now this has made it so much faster and easier to deal with automatic color matching over time on a clean plate. The two new tools in here, if I hit my node graph, I'm going to open up. The one, first one's going to be called the Pixel Analyzer, if I can spell. And then the other tool that we're going to need is going to be called the Color Matcher from Milo Labs. These two tools over here will work together to help us change exposure over time. First thing though is we gotta clean it up. Uh, I need to get rid of this white sticker, that's the objective. So I'm gonna go to my first frame here, which is much darker than the last frame you'll see as the sun goes across. So I'll go to my first frame and I'm gonna freeze that. The easiest way that I know to freeze a frame in here is to use the time speed tool with this new button called, well, we'll find out what it was, I forgot. I'm gonna hit shift space, call it time speed. And it's called freeze frame, obviously. Uh, that makes sense. To freeze the frame that you're parked on. So I just move my orange ticker down here to the frame I want to freeze to do cleanup on. Move it to that frame, which we're going to work from frame zero for this whole tutorial. So our reference frame, and everything's based off of reference frame, is going to be frame zero, the start frame. I'm going to hit freeze frame. And as soon as I do that, you'll see it's just frozen in time. Now we need to paint this sucker out. So to paint it out, I'm going to use the paint tool, shift space, paint. That'll load the paint tool in the flow. I'm going to load it into the viewer, pick and flick. We see paint is loaded. I'm going to change this to stroke so it goes on all frames, clone. And then this is not a painting tutorial, so I'm going to go quick on this one. But I'm using command to size up my brush, option to sample. And I'm just going to option and just keep doing this until I get rid of that, um, that sticker there. And we get some sort of a semblance of a clean patch that we can work with. I'd say that works for me. We need to cut out the segment. So this has to, we basically just want to be changing just the part we're cleaning up. So that's what this part's going to do next. I'm going to do that with a B spline tool. That's right here. You could do that with a polygon. Either way works fine. But before I actually click in here to draw my shape, I need to see the area I need to patch. So I'm going to load my time speed node back in here again so I can see the, the sticker I'm trying to remove. The B spline is kind of like the polygon, but it automatically adds um, round corners for you, which is, which is pretty handy. I'm going to use Shift-O as the shortcut to close it. And I'm going to pull out um, some of these nodes. I'm holding Option to the nearest point, so I don't have to go in there and be so super precise with the way I... I set these, and then the other thing I'll make point out here is I'm going to need some special softness so that I don't come into this sticker here if I just want to remove this white mountain view or whatever, whatever the name of that sticker is. So I'm going to use a double polygon to do that. And the double polygon allows you to add an external softness, because if you just look at this now, it's just one hard softness. And if I use soft edge, it, it does the same around all of it. But if you use a double polygon, I'm double clicking to reset that, if I turn this into a double polygon, which is what this button will do right here, it allows me to control specific edges softness individually. So now that I've done that, it has changed the, the icons down here to a double polygon, but it's hard to control. So as soon as I turn something into a double polygon, I right click in the flow and I go to my inner poly and I say, I'm done with that. <laughs> and then I right click again with my outer poly and I say, I want to modify only. So that way I'm not adding new extra points and you can see now I can drag specific points for you know just specific edges so that they have a different softness 
compared to a, another edge, which is what the soft edge parameter would do. I'm going to load my time speed up here as I'm drawing on this. And this is another important thing to pay attention to. I'm creating my mask while it's disconnected from anything else so that I can see these lines um, without without anything else getting in the way. So this right here, obviously, I, I went too far in that example, but I want this to come out differently there than I do. Come on, get that point. Oh, I, was hold, I wasn't getting option. I was holding control. So yeah, you can see if you hold down option while you're near point, you can just grab that without having to get in so tight and close to it. It's a nice way to work. Um, the other thing to pay attention to, anytime you draw shapes and whatnot, they are automatically set up to be animated over time with these diamonds. So if you don't want that, meaning for rotoscoping, and we don't want that because it's a still frame, you can right click over here and just say you want to remove the um, remove the polyline. And now that won't accidentally get moved with other keyframes over time. Now, how do we apply this mask to the paint version here to, to cut it out? I like to use a matte control. So I'm going to do shift space, matte control. And then the way I'll use the matte control with this B spline is connecting it over here to the foreground, the green foreground input. And in the matte control tool, you have to change two things. One, combine. Instead of none, we're going to combine the alpha because we're taking the alpha here. We're going to combine it to here. But the other thing we need to do is we need to pulse multiply the image, which actually does the final piece of the cutout and multiplies it out for us. So now we have um, a patch that we can work with. The reason this is black here is because of a default I have. You should see a checker underlay. Now to get this thing moving along with the original footage to cover it up, we need a tracker to do that. We're going to do this really easy. This is a simple shot to track. So I'm going to come over here. You can see my node, hopefully, you know, Take screenshots as needed. Shift space, I'm going to load a tracker tool. The new trackers in DaVinci Resolve um, Studio uh, 19, whatever, they use these IntelliTracks, which is supposed to make it easier. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But I'm just dragging this box over the section I want to track, and I'm doing it from our reference frame for our match move, which is important here. Pay attention, this is frame zero to start the track. And from this, I'm going to load the tracker into the window so I can see the results as it goes, hitting go forward. And it's a simple track. Now, to actually place the patch on top that we had painted out, which was based off of our reference of frame zero, we're going to do one thing over here. Operation, change that to operation match move, merge foreground over background. This is essentially making this a merge node for us. And so if we take the output of our mat control, which was our, which was our patch here, this is going to make it match move over time. And it sticks there really nicely. But the problem is the color, right? That's the whole reason I want to make this tutorial is how do we get that color so it matches over time? That's where the color matcher and pixel analyzer come in. But before we do that, I do want to point out one other thing about the, the tracker here. In the operation match move settings, this is based off of a reference frame. Start means frame zero. We also have, if you change this to end instead, that means it's based off of this last frame of 54. That's what reference end means. So if you wanted to clean up the last frame instead, you would choose that. And the other one that's possibly useful for you would be select time. If you choose select time, that's the frame you started tracking from. So if you tracked from some middle frame, just know what that was. Maybe label your paint frame to that frame number, and then it will everything will match move fine. You can't choose this afterwards, though. But since we started with start, we'll leave it on start and make use of our pixel analyzer and color matcher. You're going to laugh at how simple this actually is to use. I love it. First thing I need to do is get a stabilized version of this footage here. We're going to do that by copying and pasting our initial tracker, Command C to copy it, clicking over here, Command V to paste it over here. And I'm going to stabilize our original footage. So I'm taking a copy of our original footage. By the way, if this goes into the green input or something, don't worry. It always needs to go in. The trackers need input in the background because it sets the re resolution for them to work. And the other reason we need that in our background is we're going to change our operation on the stabilized version of the footage. Instead of saying match move to foreground over background, to do stabilization, it's called BG only here in Fusion. So choose BG only. And now if you take a look at this, it's basically locked off that XY translation position to the start frame, which is going to be useful for us using the pixel analyzer part of the tool. So with that stabilized version, I'm going to take the output of the tracker into pixel analyzer, load pixel analyzer into my viewer. And the way the tool comes prepackaged is it has this viewer down here of our, our high, low, and average, um, you know, this on-screen 
tool. I'm just gonna turn that overlay off in the inspector because we don't need that. What I do need to do is right now it's analyzing the entire image and I just wanna analyze the section that's like right next to the sticker to get those RGB values over time. So you can just shrink this down by grabbing the controls that are top and bottom on the screen. I'm gonna drag this right above where the sticker is to kind of get values that are, are nearby so that they can then be used in the color matcher tool in the next step. So let's say this is a, a decent representation. It's essentially scanning this box right here for color changes over time where you can see at the beginning, it's darker. When we get to the end, it's brighter. And so it can do some math in linear space to do the color adjustments for us. Now the color matcher tool, it's not hooked up anything over here in our flow. First thing I'm gonna do, let's, let's get our media out a little bit more prepped. We'll move our output of our tracker to our media out. Okay, so that goes back to our timeline. The color matcher tool needs to come after this tool here. Because remember, if we look at this, it's got that terrible color change over time. The color matcher tool is just gonna insert in between there. I'm holding shift when you get that blue and uh, green line, then you can see that's that's loaded in between there. And the way the color matcher tool works is let's go back to our reference frame. Everything seems fine and dandy here. We're gonna use our destination color and the set destination to source button here. First thing I'm gonna do is right click the destination color red, say connect to the average, and this is coming from our pixel analyzer node, the average of red. And the green channel, I'm gonna right click on the word green, say connect to average of green. The blue channel or the blue color here, I'm gonna right click and say connect to average of blue. And it doesn't look quite right, and that's because we haven't set the destination to source for the reference frame yet. Again, all this needs to happen off of a reference frame, reference frame of zero for our tracking and the paint we did. Click that button, and it basically zeroes out and multiplies out those those gain values so that it you don't see it here on this frame. But if I go to further frames now as I play through, it's multiplying those values. See how those are animating? Because it's looking through the probe stuff in that pixel analyzer and it's taking care of everything for us. And you can see we have a successfully hidden that that sticker with uh, you know by just using the pixel analyzer and the color matcher. If I were to turn this off again, you can see how much a difference that has made. It's pretty incredible, right? So color matcher and um, pixel analyzer, you can get those from workspace, um, scripts, we've got reactor, open reactor, and again, you have to have DaVinci Resolve Studio nowadays to get reactor. And I'll show you all my installed tools here. A lot of them are from Milo Labs. He makes incredible stuff. And if you want the footage to follow along with today, I do have this shot available for all my Cutting Club members up at creativevideotips.com if you want to follow along. Hey, I'm Chadwick. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.